we want to go and find cool cars that you know would usually be out of the range of a high schooler to buy fix them up for real cheap and then i will sell it for a profit it's probably why the car's crashed i don't think it's legal to drive without a door it's not a mail truck So this is pretty harrowing, AC Milk. It is. I mean, I'm driving a U-Haul yeah. with a trailer on the back, which is not that big of a deal, but it's these goddamn trucks everywhere. <laughs> yeah. There we were, sitting at the computer, yep. looking for a car to buy for this project of ours, you know? Yep. And um, we were trying to think what the perfect car would be. Yeah. And uh, we kind of decided, what do we want it to be? We wanted it to be... Sporty. It's got to be sporty. Flickable, but it's got to look interesting. So. We originally were looking at things like Preludes, we were looking at Civics, things like that, yeah, right? Yeah. But we were like, you know, if we're going to do this, why not make it a little more special? There's this horrible situation that life throws at you. When you're a young man, you want a cool car. Yes. It's literally like the only thing in your life. Second to women. Yeah, absolutely. But it's kind of part of it. You <laughs> yeah, want a cool car sure. so you can attract women. It all the women. ties together. Yeah, it? okay. Yeah. <laughs> so young men want cool cars. Young men can't afford cool cars. Yeah. So you're sitting there with trash. Mm. You're getting your grandma's secondhand, you know, like Oldsmobile or something. Yep. I don't even know. I've been there. Yeah. Oldsmobile. Well, the thing is, you, you get a gross car. Mm. You're not going to look cool. You're not going to pull up to high school in a cool no. car. And it's when you get to our age where you can start to afford a cool car. Yeah. Right? So you could go out and buy something that you really like. Right. Problem is, when you get to our age, it's not that important anymore. No. We already have kids and wives. Yeah. We want to go and find cool cars that you know, would usually be out of the range of a high schooler to buy, fix them up for real cheap mm -hmm. and be able to sell them at an affordable price. You don't need to get a Camry. You don't need to get some crap box. No, no, you don't. You can get something awesome. So we're going to be seeking out cool cars. They're going to be cheap because either they kind of been strung through the ringer and they look crap, you know, yeah. um, or they've been damaged in some way or whatever. And I'm going to teach you guys that on a very, very, very tight budget, you can actually fix these things up, make them cool and afford a cool car. We're gonna put in the, the work, you're gonna fix this up, you're gonna teach everyone, give everyone the confidence to very cheaply, on a thousand dollar budget, sometimes even less, mm -hmm. take a really, really cool car that may be wrecked, yeah. make it cool, and then I will sell it for a profit. Yeah, you see, the thing that I found out, okay, about America, one thing that I really don't like is how much people charge for labor. It's yeah. ridiculous, you take your car in to do something very simple, Yeah. And they're always finding excuses to tack on some more work. Mm -hmm. They're charging ridiculous amounts of money. Okay, I mean, look, South Africa's the same, and that's why I know how to fix cars. Yeah. Is when I was younger, all of my cars were crap. I couldn't yeah. afford something nice. I was always breaking down, mm -hmm. and I didn't have the option. I didn't have the money to go take it into a mechanic and pay these exorbitant labor fees. So I learned very quickly how to fix my own cars. Mm -hmm. and you know what? It's actually a lot simpler than most people think. Sure. It's just like anything else in life. Until you've actually got your hands on it and tried it, it seems complicated, it seems difficult, but it's actually not. So the whole point is, I want to be able to teach you guys some very, very simple mechanics. Mm -hmm. The kind of stuff where you can go into an auto zone, buy some, some tools, buy a couple of parts that you might need, mm -hmm. do it yourself. All with affordable hand tools, nothing fancy. We're not going to be doing anything that requires specialist stuff. No. And uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a car cool and work perfectly again so Winston we got a thousand dollars in our pocket yeah but the car that we were looking at yeah is not a thousand dollars no so I'm going to have to try to be real slick <laughs> in bargaining this one now yeah exactly um, by the way mm. I wanted to tell you yeah the place that we're going is actually right next to Compton nice so this might have a factor in the price of the car <laughs> hopefully there's no bullet holes and drugs in it I don't think there will be. I mean, we'll find Com out. Compton's one of those things like downtown Detroit. Everyone says it's bad, but it's mm. not actually that bad. Well, it's like Soweto in South Africa. It's like a tourist place. Right. You know? Gotcha. <laughs> well, well, we'll find out. Yeah, we will. Hi, so, uh, sorry, what's your name? Edward. Edward, yeah. okay. 
So guys, here we are. This is Edward. He's the uh, owner of this awesome car that we're about to buy. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about this thing? Well, it's a 1985 Toyota MR2. Yeah. Uh, it features the uh, awesome 4AGE engine mm -hmm. compared to the uh, C50 transmission, five speed. Yeah. It's notorious for the fifth gear pop-outs, but the later models got rid of that. So yeah, this has the later model transmission. For it. Yeah. That's cool. That's so, yeah, I mean, this this is exactly what we've been looking for. But now uh, everybody's going to find out why why we're getting a good deal here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the yeah. Hit somebody hit me. Right. Yeah, what happened actually? Uh, well, I was just going right in front of a school, and uh, I think Dad accidentally did an illegal U-turn crossing over two lanes of traffic. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. And he just smacked into you on the side. What was he driving? Toyota Corolla. Okay. Oh, 09. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so yeah. Toyota meets Toyota. All Keep right. it in the family. So, yeah, I mean, the, the major issue for us really is we're going to have to fix the suspension here. I guess we have to try to get this thing started. Yeah. What do you know? That's That was real quick. Started right up. So, how much do you want for this thing? I was looking for around 2000 I think 2000 is a good overall price for this you know, car because it's, uh, it's pretty fairly damaged, but it has some street value to it. And uh, the previous owner said that he had about 50,000 miles on engine and transmission before he swapped them on. Okay. Yeah. But don't call me on that because I don't have receipts. I got you. Sure, sure, I got sure. you for sure. Oh, it doesn't? So, yeah. Okay. So now e-brake. Yeah, a little more to do than I was expecting, but that's okay. <laughs> It's all part of it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Do the lights pop up? Yeah. Let's take a look. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So what do you got there, bro? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I reckon we renegotiate a little bit. That windshield is effed. Yeah. Thirteen? Yeah. Thirteen. Okay. Cool. There's a lot more damage, a lot more things don't work. So the, the windshield is pretty knackered, it's pretty messed up. Yeah, would, a couple you, of things. would you agree on 13? It's gonna be kind of a, kind of a big job. Yeah, actually yeah, I need the money. So. Okay, okay, cool. Not trying to lowball really it. I really appreciate it. We just really didn't we didn't know about that part. So. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Here you go. Thank you. Sweet. Alright, let's get this thing on the trailer, what do you say? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. We almost ended up with a free weed vape. Definitely. I don't know, man. Isn't that like a felony? It's California. That's probably why the car's crashed. Ooh, maybe. I'll uh, go. Uh, I'll go return this. Yeah. Okay. Now, what Seamilk doesn't know is I've got a little friend here, a little surprise. So, Seamilk, mm -hmm. you know who's actually more interested in this car than both you and I? Definitely not my wife. <laughs> a little, little guy who's come all the way Kirobo. from Japan. Kirobo! Here we go. Kirobo! Ano kuruma wa sugoi desu ka? Ano kuruma wa mechakucha desu. That's like the only thing I know in Japanese is cherries. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me, Kirobo! It's creepy as hell! <laughs> For those of you who are kind of curious as to what this is, is this is our new mascot. It's going to come along on all our... At least in our Toyotas. Yeah. He is from Toyota. Yes. And, uh, He's kind of like an experimental little robot thingy that I got in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably one of the only ones in the States, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's get so this worthless whip home. In order to ensure smooth trailer action here, Kirobo is your tofu cup. What the is water. This, like initial D? Yes. If he falls over, you fail. Okay. It's a little different than initial D because. Um, you know, they're actually driving the cool Toyota in that one, not towing it. Yeah. All right, so he can't fall over. No, it's not a lot of fall Try my best. So gradual braking, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, fail. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shit test. That's hard. thing is I was expecting fender door damage yeah but you know we've got a windscreen to replace handbrake doesn't work we've got
got a ton of like cosmetic damage. The paint's rough. All the seals are rough. Well, it's a good thing we got them down to 1300 because that, as we said, we only have $1,000 to make this good, right? Yeah. But that's just more stuff we have to do without paying other people to do it. We're gonna have to do everything ourselves. You know, the thing is, right, the engine started straight away, seems mechanically sound. I reckon it's gonna drive okay after we fix the suspension. The insurance company quoted him 6,000 to get it fixed. Right. It would've cost 6,000, would've cost, that's ridiculous. That's insane. Yeah. Why would you pay that? Yeah, I, we're gonna do it for now. Well, we've got a budget of 700, 700 bucks. So let's see if it's- It's even, a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> but yeah, I think we can do that. You know um, what the first challenge is? What's that? Getting it home. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Stop watching movies in your car or... <laughs> Now what I think we need to do now is actually you need to, you're the mechanic, right? You need to go through the car and point out what needs to be fixed. But since we only have 700 bucks, you're going to have to prioritize it for me. Yeah, well, we're going to have to call in Dr. Milk. Can you tell Kiribo to shut up? What is he saying? I don't speak Japanese. Well, he's talking about this process that the Japanese have. This is what he wants us to do to the car. Okay. Um, when you get a bowl or a cup or something that's been broken, mm -hmm. They will actually use like gold leaf and stuff to repair it. So repair the cracks with gold and that actually adds value. So what you're doing is you, you see a damaged, you're celebrating the damage basically. And you're taking something that's damaged and improving on it by repairing the damaged thing with something better. So I hope so it's he like celebrating imperfections. Pretty much. And I I'm hope he doesn't want us to use gold to fix this thing. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to pay for that. Dude, is that why a lot of Japanese guys like chicks with crooked teeth? I mean, yeah, I guess then <laughs> they could get gold fillings. <laughs> oh boy, we've got a lot to fix on this thing. I think it's time for me to call in Dr. Milk. Hey, Dr. Milk! At your service. Winston, why don't you tell me in a list of uh, prioritized fashion what we need to fix on this car? Uh, pretty much the whole front suspension as far as like tie, tie rod ends, toe arms, all that kind of stuff. It's all been bent, so we're going to have to look at all of that. We have to take this wheel off and check it out properly. Of course, we have this whole front fender, which, well, let's be honest, it could probably be saved, but I'm guessing not because it's actually torn through here. Um, whole passenger side door. 100%. It's all damaged, all the wires are hanging out. It's mangled beyond repair. Luckily, the frame doesn't seem badly damaged at all, so it could just be a matter of changing these things and we're good. What else? We've got damage to both rims on this side of the car, and we have to look carefully at that because that's quite dangerous. If it's cracked or damaged, you don't want to be driving that. Kiribo, shut up. Um, we've got a flat tire on the back here. We've got a cracked windscreen, which I think is pretty important. And uh, we know that the car actually runs. So the engine probably needs a look at. We have to check all the things inside, but most importantly, suspension, fender, door, and wheels. Dr. Milk, what's your prognosis? Oh, what is that? Cyan freaking like sarin gas? Yeah, probably sarin <laughs> gas. <laughs> now this is like being pulled out of the desert or something. You're getting lost in the box. It's eating you, dude. Yeah. It used to be white, so maybe when we sand it down, we'll actually get down to white, and then we can just go over the white again. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, does it have a window? It does. <laughs> Look at that. It's a full door. Yeah, let me uh... It's not dented either. Just for camera, let me try to get that up. That was in the desert. Oh, there is a thing here. 
probably from shipping, but we can hammer that out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. $80 door. $80 door. <laughs> this is obviously uh, black soy. <laughs> I'm a soy boy. Yeah, totally. oh, that's oh. very useful for the car. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, that's correct. Rust converter. See this? I guess it didn't really survive the shipping very much. That's supposed to be straight. Uh oh. Ah, let's Let's see what it up. looks like. I wonder what color it's gonna be. That doesn't look great. <laughs> it's a good thing we were respraying this, you know? Shit. Yeah. Diapers. Well, it's kind of uh, appropriate since this is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Are we any better off? Well, yeah, look. Oh, this is bent too. To get that right is going to be very difficult. Going to have to learn some sheet metal work, you know? Get that right. Yeah, starting our own scrapyard here. Great. <laughs> You can do it with a hospital. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Sorry, it just looks ridiculous. It's terrible, I can't see shit. <laughs> I can I've got a hazy it. eye. Ah. At least it's not gas. Yeah, but I can't see like properly, it's hazy. <laughs> Hope that goes away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. This car is not worth it. Jesus Christ, man. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you guys, this California smog crap is such a bunch of bollocks. It's an old car, it's 1985. Do you know how many, it's got 300 and something thousand miles on it. It's so close to passing. I've been doing so much. And you eventually just get to a point where you're like, just wanna scrap it, you know? So, can you believe it? We passed. We actually passed. I gotta see these numbers. Yeah. How, how close was it? I cleaned up pretty good. All right. You ready to go? I am. Finally get to drive this thing after fixing it for so long. Yeah, what is it, Kirobo? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Better you than me. All right, fine. That's the way you want it. It's gonna look ridiculous. How does this even work? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> for those yeah. of you not in the know, that says Japan. Yeah, it does. this may be Kirobo's punishment for us living in China for so long. The price you pay. All right, Kirobo, you happy now? Does that work for you? All right, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? Yes. To finally get this car going. All right, first time. Your first, first time. time, right? Yeah. Well, I must say, initial impressions are actually really cool. I've had the pleasure to drive this for a couple weeks now, and yeah. I've been loving it. I'm, I'm excited to see what you think. Well, number one, the steering is incredibly light and responsive. It's not even power steering. No, that's that's surprising to me because you know my my C4 Corvette's power steering is much heavier than this right. thing. So yeah, it's so light, and nimble. You've got great visibility everywhere. Yeah. I absolutely love the gearbox. You know the way it shifts through the gears is nice and smooth and snickety. You know. 
Yeah, it's such a fun little car to drive. You know, honestly, I'm getting some very weird looks from people passing us. <laughs> I bet. I must look like the biggest weave in the world. They're just trying to wear that in China. They, they're just... They so mob me, they lynch me, they just <laughs> lynch me, you know? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Dude, this is such a nice little car. Um, I'm actually very impressed. Like the, Especially the smoothness of the engine. Yeah. I mean, it's taken me a hell of a lot of work to get that engine to into this shape, but now it's like perfect. Yeah. And you can feel it. It's just awesome. It's amazing what they could do with 1.6 liters and no turbos. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, there was a supercharged version of yeah. this car, but it only put out like 20 more horsepower, yeah, right? Yeah, it was the 145. Surprisingly stable on the highway. I mean, we're clipping here at about 70 miles an hour. Yeah. And I'm not feeling intimidated at all. No. You know, some of the cars that I've driven or have been driving recently you know you're on the highway and it's floating all over the place oh and you're my gosh. I mean that's what you gotta love about Japanese cars is they were ahead of their time so they really were you can take any any other car of the same time period and you just don't feel as I don't know safe because it's just not as refined in, in 1985 this wasn't like a high-end car this is an no. affordable little sports car I can't wait to see how this thing zero to 60 is held up after all this time, to be honest. Yeah, so what we wanted to do was we have all the factory numbers, and that's the beauty of the internet. They've cataloged everything, um, all the stats, the weight, the zero to 60 time, all this kind of stuff. And we have some of those old Motor Week videos we can go back to to refer to as well. For reference, the American version of the Toyota MR2 did zero to 60 in 9.7 seconds, whereas the Japanese one did 8.8. .8. It was like pretty blistering for the day. Yeah. I mean, you had other stuff, other like sports cars back then pulling 11s or 12s usually. So what we're going to cool. do is find a good stretch of road, yeah. use an app on our phone, do a couple runs and see uh, an average that we get. Sounds good. We're going to have to take into account that I'm in the car. Yeah. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. But I think I have, I have okay hopes that this is held on to most of its power. I think so. Um, you know what's really blowing my mind right now? What? It's the last time we were on the highway, this was on the back of a trailer. Right. And like completely undrivable. Right. Um, you know, with that suspension damage, you couldn't get it over like 20 miles an hour. It was just no. screeching and, right. you know, wheel was off to the side. And here we are driving perfectly smoothly down the highway at like 60 miles an hour with no issues whatsoever. It's yeah. awesome. All right, Winston, we are at the testing ground. Zero to 60. Zero to 60. Are you ready? I'm calling uh, nine seconds. What about you? I'd say 8.5. Okay, ready? this app's gonna know, it's gonna tell us when to go. Okay, so right. get ready. Okay. Make sure there's no cars behind you, okay? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Ready, and wait, wait. Ready, set, go! All right, nine seconds. Holy crap. Nine seconds with me in the car, dude. That's super and that's cool. accurate. That's not some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, that means like without me in the car, you could absolutely hit stock numbers. That's insane. It's super good. I kind of want to have a go. Yeah, sure. Okay. Ready, set, go. Yep, okay, 9.01 seconds. Okay, so we're, it's basically 9 seconds. It's 9 seconds. Stop. Okay, cool. Alright, thanks. So what's the deal? So, the guy came over to look at it. This is fast forward two weeks now. And we're getting rid of it for 3.9. But it wasn't a total loss. We still ended up with a little bit of profit. I'm most of all really sad because I actually don't want to sell this car. Over the past two weeks driving this car, I've realized how things can change, but also how powerful nostalgia can be. Hold on, wait a minute. I've never owned an MR2. Heck, this 1985 was made a year before I was even a zygote, yet it reminded me of so much. See, I got into cars before the whole Fast and the Furious era of excess, 
Yet I always had a soft spot in my heart for little Japanese cars. I think it's an underdog thing. My best memories were had in my 1982 Toyota Supra that I bought in high school. The adventures, the smells, the friends, the fun, the recklessness. Those are the memories that many of us chase when we're faced with real world responsibilities. We drive up the prices of cars that we had or wanted when we were younger because we want to remember what it was like back when life was such a free for all. We delude ourselves into thinking that it was better back then. It wasn't. Cars are immeasurably better now, like in every single way. I love the design of these old cars, but I refuse to kid myself and say that cars were better in any way, shape, or form, save for interesting designs. The most bargain basement bubble car of today could outtrack almost everything from 30 years ago. But what the hell is it about this stupid little wannabe stormtrooper looking 80s spaceship? It looks ridiculous, yet despite my want for all things new and better, I can't stop driving it. I start making excuses like the rest of them. Well, the seating position is so driver focused. It's about momentum, just keep it in the power band. It's so much more satisfying than having all that power all the time. Then I start making those time period comparisons. In 1985, you could have a 5 liter V8 Camaro for about the same price as this little MR2. Seems a bit ridiculous actually, since that means you got a three times larger engine and flashy looks to boot. However, when you factor in the fact that this was a thousand pounds heavier, slower, handled worse, and was built with the reliability standards of styrofoam and a rainstorm, it starts to make sense, this little MR2. Yeah, it's the underdog thing, sure. I'm not holding on to the past. This little 1.6 liter four banger made about 128 horsepower in its Japanese form, you know, the one that we have. And yeah, it's not gonna rip your face off or pin you back in your seat, but my lord, does this car sing. Keeping it above 5,000 RPMs and then banging it up to around 8,000 is where this car moves. And then all of a sudden, the numbers don't matter. I hate hype. When everyone tells me to drive a Miata because it feels like a go-kart, my body convulses at the idea of conformity. And then I head off to a go-kart track, and I'll have to wait in traffic there. However, there is something to be said for this car in the same vein. It's properly good. It's comfortable, it is very driver focused, and an absolute blast in the corners. From the snickety little gear changes to the way the mid-engine makes it squat down on throttle, it's something I hadn't felt before. The way the car smells, the way you feel when you're driving it, all of a sudden, nothing matters. And that's the point, isn't it? Yes, cars are better now. They're more comfortable, they're faster, they're safer, they're more reliable, better in every way, shape, and form. Yet I've become that guy. Mr. Live in the past. They don't make them like they used to, guy. But you know what? Let me play make-believe just a little longer. Sayonara, I don't want to say goodbye.